This is the walkthrough video for the flood risk mapping exercise in QGIS introduction. And the first thing we're going to do is add the backdrop mapping. So go to add backdrop mapping over here, click the button, navigate to the project folder, go to backdrop mapping, and then click the first file, the SO85 TIFF file. Click open, that brings up the SO85 map tile from the Ordnance Survey. And then we need to add the study area so we know what we're going to be working with. So go to add vect data, the button over here, then go to browse and then back in the project folder you'll find the study area folder then choose the shp file the shape file with the file ending shp click open and click open again and it brings up a colored rectangle now this is good but we can make it more useful by making it transparent and to do this double click on the name under the layers panel click simple fill and just click on the drop arrow press transparent fill and OK and it comes see through with just a dark outline so we can see everything inside the study area. Now to add the elevation data go back to the add raster data button back to the project folder go to add elevation data here highlight everything in this folder click open and then you need to confirm the co coordinate reference system for each tile individually so you just got to press OK through all of those which I'll speed up just a little bit. Once you've done all of that, you'll have 18 individual map uh, elevation tiles on your map layout. So we can make this into one smooth continuous layer by using the merge tool, which you can find on the toolbar. Go to the raster tab, miscellaneous, and go to merge. The input files will just be all of the elevation data that we just opened. So highlight everything again, click open, and for the output file, you just need to go to select and choose the location to save the file. So it's going to be output files just to keep everything tidy and give it a name, just something simple. Click save. And then you need to make sure you put a cross in the no data value box here. This means that any areas that have no data will be given the value zero. And then make sure there's a cross in the load into canvas when finished button. Click OK. Wait for the tool to finish. Then once it's completed, you have to confirm the coordinate reference system again. Click OK. OK through the dialog boxes. And close the merge window. And you can see our mosaics raster elevation layer here. So we can tidy up the layers panel a little bit because there's a lot going on. So if we first collapse all of the original elevation data layers. And then use the add group button to put a group at the bottom of the layers panel there. Let's call it something, again, something simple, elevation. And then you can use click and shift to highlight them all and then drag them into the new folder. You can collapse the folder and turn it off because we don't need it anymore and be left with the merged elevation layer here. So to make it look a bit more interesting, we can give it a 3D look. Again, go to, use, go to the raster tab but this time go to Terrain Analysis and Hill Shade. The elevation layer needs to be changed to the merge layer, the one that we just created. And then the output layer, for this again, just give it something simple. So this is gonna be a hill shade. Click Save, and then you don't need to change anything else here. Click OK and wait for that tool to finish. Again, OK on the British National Grid, and it brings up a grainy layer that looks like tin foil really so if you zoom in you can see some detail there so we can make it look even better if we just collapse those put the merged elevation layer above it on the layers panel and then double click to open the properties again on the transparency tab move the slider to about 40 percent we're going to make it um, 40 percent transparent so we can see the hill shade layer beneath it and then go to the style tab and change the render to single band pseudo color, which gives us access to these color ramps here. You can choose any one you like, but spectral works just fine. And then to change it from continuous, so just looking like the color ramp, you can give it equal intervals and choose the number of classes that, that the color ramp contains. So we'll go for 15 works and then click classify. So the values here are the elevation values at which the color will change. So you'll be able to tell from the color the exact elevation. So click OK. 
then that will apply the changes. And you can see that the darker colors, the red, more red colors, are lower elevation, and then the darker the blue, the higher the elevation. So the next step in the practical is to add the vector data from the ordnance survey so we can see the buildings, roads, the railways and the river. So if you go back to the add vector layer and I go to browse and then ordnance survey vector data. Open the subfolder and we just need to use the files that end in .shp and have shp file under the type column. So you click each one and if you hold control then you'll be able to click all four of them at the same time to save you coming back. Then just click open and open again and you'll see that they will populate the map but just all throughout the SO map tile not just our study area. So to confine it to the study area you can use the clip tool. So if you go to vector and then geoprocessing tools and find a clip then the input vector layer is the layer which is being clipped. So in this case, it's going to be the building layer. And then the clip layer is the feature to which it's being clipped. So that's going to be the study area. And you need to make sure to click on that each time because it will change. Click and browse to find where you're going to save the new shape file. Output files is fine. And then give it a name, something easy. Buildings clip, click save, then click OK. This one takes a little, a little while, so I'll speed up the video here. Once that's finished, if you move the window, you'll be able to see that the buildings have taken on a different color inside the study area. So we don't need to close the clip window. You can just choose the next layer, which will be railway tracks. Change the clip layer again to study area. Then give it another name. Click OK. And then we'll go through that again for the roads. OK. And last time for surface water, change it to study area again. And we'll call that water clip. Save and OK. Then you can close that window. Then what that lets us do is create another folder here. We'll call that one vector data. So put all of the original vector layers into that folder. And then collapse that and turn it off again. So we've just got the vector data in the study area. Now you can change the colors of the data that are in this study area now by double clicking on its name in the layer panel and go to style again. So we're on building. So with the ordnance survey, they're usually an orange color. So we'll choose this one and click OK. Railways are usually quite a thin black line. So you can change the width of the line using the up and down arrows here or entering some value into that box. And we'll do the same with the roads. We'll make them a kind of realistic gray color. Make those a bit thicker so they stand out a bit more. And then the water will change that from purple, we'll make that blue, and OK. So if you zoom in here, you'll see that the water actually goes over the railway, which we can change just by rearranging them in the layers panel. Putting water at the bottom is a bit more realistic now. Then the next step is to add the flood risk data. So it's vector data again, go back to browse, and back to the project folder. Then find the folder that says flood risk zones. Open this one and you get the option of zone two or three. We'll just go with two first and then find the shape file. Click open and open again. And it doesn't seem to do anything, but if we zoom out, then we can see it is part of a bigger layer. So we'll click that afterwards. We'll just add the second layer. Flood risk zones in zone three. Shape file. I'll click open and again that lays over the top of zone 2. So if we go back to vector and geoprocessing tools, go to clip, change the input vector layer to zone 2, we're clipping it to the study area, we'll go to browse, we're still in the output files folder, we'll put in zone 2 clip 
and then OK. And then we'll find the zone 3 layer, and then we'll find the study area again. Zone 3 clip. Save that, and OK. And click close to close the clip window. And then we can switch off the original flood zone layers. So that leaves us with the layers that are quite opaque so we can change those and see which buildings are going to be affected by the flooding. Because it's vector data the transparency is under the style tab so just move the slider to about 50% and OK and then do the same for zone 2 and click OK and you can see which buildings will be affected by different levels of flood. And then the final feature that we could add was the flood defences, and that's vector data again. So back to the project folder, flood defences, find the, the national defences shapefile with the SHP file type there. Open that one, and it doesn't seem to do much. We'll put it above the flood zones, and then we'll change the colour so it stands out a bit more make it black and change the thickness and there we can see the flood defences along Hilton Road. So that brings us to the end of the practical. Don't forget to have a go at the questions on the handout, have a go at the quiz on Blackboard if you can and have a look at some of the other practicals as well.